Today, perspective on our students. This is John from the Bowman Lab, and uh, my lab studies the evolution and development of land plants, how plants first crawled onto land and diversified all into all the different varieties that you find today. And uh, honors is really a year for students to decide whether or not they want to enter a research career. And uh, it's an opportunity to put into practice all of the material and, and concepts and ideas that you may have learned in your first three years of undergraduate and put them into a practice in the lab and discover, hopefully discover new things. So my lab studies the evolution of land plants and, and evolution, great moments in evolution are often depicted like this on the left, you know, cartoon by Larson, where the, the fish that are developing some sort of limb-like uh, uh, appendages here are, are, are longing to get onto land. But in reality, the evolution of, of animal life on land depended upon plants basically already being there because there was no reason for animals to go up there until plants had already colonized the land. And in reality, probably in the Cambrian, the crust looked more like this where you have some uh, sort of cryptogamic crust. And these are usually consists of cyanobacteria, some different types of green algae, and perhaps some fungi, but lichens hadn't evolved by this time yet. And most of the lineages of fungi that we know about today or think about today weren't uh, diversified on land either. So my lab uses a, a combination of phylogenomics or evolutionary genomics and traditional forward and reverse genetics to understand how uh, plants, land plants evolved from basically aquatic algal ancestors. And we can use phylogenomics, and especially in today's age, to, to, with all the abilities of genome sequencing, to actually map all the different uh, molecular or the times in which genes are born in evolution, basically, and the time at which uh, signaling pathways evolve, etc. So we're interested in, in this big diversity down here is something's happened between the last uh, green algal lineage, this uh, lineage here, and land plants. You've uh, assembled a lot of pathways and some biochemistry, which has led to major developmental uh, changes. And so in my lab, we use two model organisms, a marcantia, which is a liverwort, and a rabidopsis, which is a flowering plant, and these sit at uh, basically opposite ends of the evolution of, or, or of the phylogenetic tree of land plants. So by comparing these two species, you're comparing across basically all of land plants. And my, as I mentioned before, my lab uses a combination of evolutionary genetics, forward genetics, reverse genetics, for example, genome editing, and functional genomics. And, and at present, most of the projects in the, in, in the lab are focused around uh, life cycles, meristems, and hormone signaling, which and, and body plan evolution, which we think are the, some of the major drivers of, of this transition from an aquatic alga to a complex uh, land plant. But we also have lots of collaborations and different groups around the world looking at other aspects of, of plant development. So I'm happy to, to entertain uh, ideas that you may have or slotting into specific uh, projects that are already ongoing in lab, you can feel free to uh, come by my office and, well, actually probably have to do, have a Zoom to talk. Right? And I'll leave but, or end by showing you just a little time lapse of our, our plant that's growing. Sorry for the uh, resolution. But you can see that uh, there's some Plants have these growing tips here, and that uh, these sense both sense the environment and produce new tissue. And so, a lot of the, the work that we're doing is focused on these meristems, which are basically groups of stem cells. All right. Thanks.